everyone. My name is Christy. Welcome to my corner. Thanks for joining me today for floss tube number 102. It's been three weeks since my last floss tube. I did record a short video last week that was just letting you know that I'm alive. Yeah, so this is like my first floss tube in three weeks and it is the first floss tube in March. So I have some exciting things to talk about today. I have some happy mail and gifts. I have a finish, a new start, a really exciting Hade milestone. So excited. I have another design. I have some works in progress. I unfortunately didn't get as much stitching done as I had hoped to, you know, hence the not being around much working lots. And that's why I didn't film for three weeks. And my finish it Feb completely complete this. I mean, I did finish one thing. That's it. Like it wasn't even a, a focus. I just was so tired all the time. So I don't have a ton to show you, but I do have some life updates and I have some exciting plans coming, which is super unexpected, but really fun. And I was thinking you all really liked when I was telling you about my, my like life. So I thought I would talk to you about a little bit about my stitching journey and how I got to this point. But before we get to any of that, I want to welcome my new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me on my crafty and artistic adventures. And welcome back to everyone who's been hanging out with me for however long you've been with me. It's been fantastic to get to know you in the comments here on YouTube and also on Instagram. And if you're not following me on Instagram, you can find me in two places. The first one is like my normal Instagram, which is Dr. Underscore Christie. I'll put that here. I can never remember which side. I think I'm, I think it goes here. And my second one is the spoolery, and that's where I um, post about vintage wooden spools when I have time to play with vintage wooden spools. And that goes right here. I think it could be wrong. I haven't posted that one lately, but I did get some uh, materials to make my spool buttons, which I have talked about, I think before. And if not, I'll talk about them again. I kind of don't quite remember what I've talked about and what I haven't talked about because I've still been vlogging for my patrons on Patreon. <laughs> but I can't remember like what you've seen and what you haven't seen. I think I've talked about buttons already, but I'll talk about them again. Anyway, this is the channel about embroidery and cross stitch, other textile crafts and history and the history of all those things and sort of vintage sewing. So if any of that is interesting to you and you're not subscribed, I'd love to have you subscribe and stick around. I'm having quite a good hair day today. Uh, it's not super humid. It's actually like the most beautiful day of the year. I think it's in the mid seventies and low humidity and low humidity for Mississippi is pretty, it's like 60% humidity. I mean, it's like nice. It's, it's just so nice out. So I'm, I'm, I'm having a good hair day. I'm feeling pretty good. I want to thank you all. Those of you who comment about my backdrop. Yeah. So I moved my, my whole pegboard system to the other corner. And when I, and I've worked in this room a bit in February. And so I'm hoping to finish it up during spring break, which is, it starts next weekend. So it's Sunday right now. So next Saturday starts spring break from Saturday to Sunday. And I hope to be able to finish this space. My plan is to kind of focus on cleaning and yard work during spring break, including like organizing this space. Yeah. And catching up with like my work work. That's the plan. So I, I hung up my things and I appreciate that everyone likes how it looks. So thank you so much. All right, let's Let's first talk, let's do stitching first, and then I'll talk about like my stitchy journey, and then I'll talk about life updates and stuff like that. So I don't know how long this is gonna be. I'm not really gonna worry about it. You haven't seen me in three weeks, and I feel like a lot has happened. You're here to hang out with me, so if you wanna fast forward or leave or whatever, I understand, but you know, it's gonna be as long as it's gonna be. So first of all, I got some happy mail from one of my subscribers, Carol, and she sent me this gorgeous card. Isn't that beautiful? It's sparkly, but it's sparkly, not in a get glitter everywhere kind of sparkly. It's just sparkly in a delightful sparkly. And it matches my shirt. That was not planned, but I love it. I love it. This is definitely gonna go in my pile of cards. It's going on my wall because it's such a beautiful card. So thank you for the card. But she contacted me. And she'd found these, I think, pretty inexpensive at her LNS in the in the basket at her LNS. And they are 
black work, medieval black work. So we have a medieval knight who is standing on a lion. There's a funny hashtag on Instagram called, that's not a lion, like just spelled out, not a lion, but squished together hashtag because medieval people colored lions in very silly ways. <laughs> lions are silly. So that's the first one is, uh, Blackwork one medieval knight and these are by Moss Creek designs and the second one is medieval maiden isn't that beautiful isn't she beautiful so I'm really excited about these and I love that this one is blue I don't know if you can see but I'm really excited about these and I want to stitch them and put them in my office because every every space in my life needs a gal a maximalist gallery wall <laughs> I've decided so this is gonna go there when I, when I get the chance to stitch them, I do need to, you know, figure out fabric and stuff like that. And I need to figure out if I want like a fancy fabric and a plain thread or a plain fabric and a fancier thread. I might do it in silk. I have all these silks that I never use. So that might be really, really nice. And I'm going to do it in the medieval colors, right? So the woman's going to be blue because until the 20th century, blue was seen as um, the a female color because the Virgin Mary's color was blue. And red and pink were seen as male colors because red was connected with things like aggression and anger. But I don't know that I want to do him in red. But I do want to do her in blue. I really like this like cobalt blue with this like royally blue with gold. I really like that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love them. They're beautiful and I can't wait. I can't wait to stitch them. Uh, I think they're going to look stunning in my office. So that's the first happy mail I got. Well, that's the only happy mail I got. And then I got some gifts. So for my birthday, my husband ordered something from a com from a, an artist or a company called Thistle Thistle. And she is an artist on Instagram. And here is her information. Thistle Thistle. And she is a metal worker and also um, does fiber art. She does um, mostly sewing, in particular garment sewing. And so he got me a couple things. The first thing he got me is a really fancy seam ripper. It is like hefty. So I think it's cast bronze and it is a hefty, hefty thing. And it looks like it has her logo on it. So her logo is sort of stars. Anyway, isn't that so pretty? So this is the first thing he got me. And it just took forever to get here because, you know, artists take time. And he also got me her, uh, her sampler print, which is sort of her print of a sampler type image. Isn't that pretty? It has all the important things from a sampler, a house and letters and trees. So this is 13 of 30 prints. Anyway, so that's really pretty. And um, that will go either on our Maximus gallery wall, which is also thing something I'm going to focus on during spring break, or it's going to go in my home office. I haven't decided yet. And then it also came with a sticker which I think is going to go in here on my, my door table when that gets done, which will also hopefully be done during spring break. So the spring break is really about like getting things organized. There was one more thing that, um, meaning here, there's one more thing that was a gift. And, um, I had my granny craft club last night. I mean, yesterday afternoon and granny craft club is my friend Carrie and I get together at our local pizza place slash beer garden, have a beer, have some pizza, do our granny crafts. And so that could be knitting and crocheting and stitching. And mostly we do stitching. So we did stitching yesterday and she had these tote bags from target that had holes that were like had holes in them that could be cross stitched. And so I didn't bring them with me, but there's a blue one and a white one. And she gave them to me as well. Cause apparently she had like 10 of them. She's like, I need to do, I need to get these out of the house. So she gave them to me and I will hopefully at some point have the chance to stitch on them. Yeah. That was my sort of fun, happy mail. And I'm really, I'm, I'm really happy about it. And I'm excited to stitch those medieval people. That'll be super fun. I do have a finish. So finish hashtag finish it. Feb was somewhat successful. 
I finished my January hairs. It is super wrinkly, but they're done. And I think they look so good. I think they look so good. I love them. I almost want to put another like plant of some kind right there and make it into a drum, like a drum pin cushion. I think that would be really cute. And I have some, hold on one sec. Okay. I have some really pretty fabric. Oops. That is the exact same color and has some gold in it for the top and the bottom if I decide to do a drum. So that's exciting. I mean, it is literally the same color scheme. <laughs> It'll be really pretty. So that's, that's my plan is to, so like put another, just put another motif on one side and make it into a drum. I've never made a drum. So this will be my first drum, but I'm really excited. And that's, like I said, my Patreon exclusive January hairs, which is no longer available. My new start is my February Patreon exclusive pattern, which is being stitched on Needle Bling Designs Butter Crunch. And it's, and I've, I think I've showed this before, or it's almost a, it's like a mustard chartreuse kind of color. And I may have showed this to you already. I don't quite remember. But I started on my February Patreon exclusive, which looks like this. And I'm doing it in, in a pink variegated, which is Impatience by um, Dying for Cross Stitch. And so it goes from a hot pink to a lighter pink to a... Um, peach to a violet. I haven't worked on this in a while. I may have already shown this to you. I don't actually remember, but that's a new start. And I hope to get further along on that. That is still available on Patreon. If you're interested in um, getting that pattern, you can find, you can find my Patreon um, in the description box down below. My Patreon is mostly a history Patreon. So I kind of post videos or write blogs or find articles or primary sources uh, from in particular my part of history. So medieval Europe, medieval early modern Europe. Um, a lot of it is connected to what I'm teaching during the week. And um, I post those twice a month. And then I also post a sort of monthly vlog where you can see what I'm doing throughout the month. And you get a pattern if you're at a particular tier. And if you're at a particular tier, you get happy mail. So historically themed happy mail. Anyway, so that's my plug for that. If you're interested in that, um, you can find it in the description box down below. And I want to thank all my patrons for supporting me because I've been really able to explore designing in a way I hadn't been before because of you. And I really appreciate it. And it's also getting me to sort of think more about history outside of just teaching it, which has also been fantastic. So anyway, I appreciate you so much. You let me do the things that I love and share them with you. And you seem to love them too. And I am so grateful for that. Let's talk whips. So my first whip was a February new start. And I started this February 1st. This is a stitch along with Nadine from Nads X Stitch. And it is the hashtag fat mermaid sal. This is what it's going to look like when it's done. It's from a, a but, uh, stitching in beads magazine. I forgot to bring it in. I'm sorry. I'll edit the picture in, but this is where I am. I'm stitching it one over one. And I've had to change how I stitch it, which is really interesting because it kept slipping. And so I had to kind of change it around, but I changed the colors. This is the Be Stitch Me. This is Be Stitch Me 30 count. I think it's a 30 count Lugana in April showers. Uh, you'll see this fabric again because my my temperature birds are stitched on this. And so I'll tell you for certain what it is. But anyway, I have the bottom of the mermaid. That's what I have. Now this is a paper chart. And so it's slow going. I may, well, if I were to stitch it again, I would put it into pattern keeper. 
but I'm, and I will, sorry. When I stitch it again, I'll put it in a pattern keeper. But the hashtag is hashtag Fat Mermaid Sal. And um, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to having it done. I don't love one over one, I'm discovering. Speaking of my temperature birds, here they are. And this is my temperature birds and it is on 32 count Lugana April showers by Be Stitch Me. I was pretty close. This is what it's gonna look like when it's done. And I am slightly behind. Here is where I am. I love it on the blue. It's good, I like it. I'm really excited. So I'm about halfway done with February. I have, you know, some more to do. But it takes time, lots of little birds, and I haven't had a lot of time. So this is, it's getting there, but it's, it's pretty slow going. And that's just stitched in the called for DMC for the, um, for the temperatures in my area. My next whip is in here. And I actually took this one to Granny Craft Club yesterday and it was hard to do without a magnifying glass. Let me tell you. So this one is, um, my nuns harvesting phalluses pattern. Here's a picture of what it's going to look like, uh, edited, like redacted. And this is part of the hashtag low hanging fruit sal. I started this on February 14th with Kelly from Animal Instinct on Floss Tube and Joe, whose channel name I cannot remember at the moment. I'm sorry. I'll put it right here. I'm sorry, Joe. I'm having a moment. I did not sleep well last night. But we're starting, we started this, well, they started it and I hopped in on they started my cell and I hopped in on it with them. That's kind of how it worked. And I have um, a bunch of the grass done. That's what I've been working on. And this is on a 36 count overcast, uh, 36 count linen in the colorway overcast by Cedar River Linen and Design. And that is Jody from Trixie Tricycles uh, Fabric Dyeing Company. And it's beautiful to work with. And my plan is that this will only take a quarter of this, fat quarter. And then on this quarter of the fat quarter, I'm going to stitch my next medieval marginalia design, which I am currently um, designing. I know the image and I've started designing it and I got fairly far and then uh, I found a better way to design it. Thanks to Dara from world on a string. I'll put her channel name down here and I'll link her down below, but she had a video earlier in the week that talked about a particular way to use the program that we use to design and it blew my mind and it is a game changer. So I'm super excited. So thank you Dara for that. I really appreciate it. That was very helpful. And now my Hade. So I'm stitching the Lady and the Unicorn um, Chartered by Heaven and Earth Design. This is a medieval tapestry that's um, in the Musée de Cluny in France, in Paris. And I did show this uh, on last week's sort of mini floss tube, but this is the picture from three weeks ago. And here I am now. I can't even get it all in. And the exciting thing, okay, so I've been working up here. I've been filling in up here. I have been filling in this space here, filling in a bit down here. And that is the bottom corner. So this is how tall it is from here to here. That's the bottom corner. Isn't that exciting? That's so exciting. I love it. I'm so excited. So excited. Okay. Anyway, that's what, that's the exciting thing that I got to the bottom corner. Cause I was right here. I was here and I'm like, you know, I just need to see how far this goes. I just need to get to the bottom corner and I have plenty of space, plenty, plenty of space. And this here, I think is like the middle of the top. So I definitely have enough fabric and and I hit the bottom friends. I hit the bottom. I think I'm going to work down here a bit because it, there are not a ton of colors down there and that will really help me feel like I made some progress. If I can sort of get stuff happening down here. I'm 
so excited. So that's my exciting news on my Heaven Earth Design Lady Unicorn. I hit the bottom. I know how tall it is. So now I have two corners, two corners done. I mean, you know, the corners, but not like the whole corners. This is, oh, this is on a 20 count ivory Ada two over two full cross because I do love a, um, I do love it, uh, a thick, a thick coverage. I love it. I'm so excited. And that is all of my stitching. I do want to talk briefly about a purchase. I bought these. They are essentially, um, I think they're called Chicago screws and they're a stud and a screw. And I think they're mostly used for leather work. But if you remember, I think I talked about this last time. I bought these, these really cute spools and I'm going to cut the ends off of them. And this, like this one, I'll probably just cut in half. So they'll be a little bit thick. And then I'm putting, and these are basically a stud with a screw on one, a stud on one end and that screw in on the other end. I'm going to affix the stud inside the hole here. And then the other one, and, and I'm going to turn them into buttons. And so they're going to be attached to my coat with the screw because I was trying to figure out how to attach this to my coat as a button with only one hole, but they are basically the same size as the original button. So I'm very excited. I can now start working on these and get these taken care of. And then my coat will have super cute buttons. I'm excited. I think that's all of the stitching content. So let me tell you about my plans. I'm excited about my plans. I was talking to my friend, Christy, who spells her name exactly how I spell my name of, um, pixel pixie cross stitch. And she does the most adorable cross stitch patterns. I was saying how I wanted to like sneak into all of her like design communities, uh, like her designing groups that she's in. She was in a bunch of designing groups and she's like, Oh, well you can't because you know, they are for specific boxes, right? If, if you have your artwork in a box, or if you have your artwork um, in a magazine, there's sort of a special group for the designers of that, for that company. And so I couldn't sneak in. She's like, but you know, I could just like make a discord group. And I'm like, oh my God, that'd be amazing. So she did. So she made a discord group and we've all been hanging out in discord. And now we're all doing these like collaborative projects. So the exciting one that is coming up in the near future is a charity Earth Day collab event. A bunch of cross stitch designers are going to design an Earth Day pattern for um, release uh, in kind of early April in honor of Earth Day, which I think is April 22nd. And essentially you will um, make a donation, show proof of donation, and then you'll get access to the PDF of all of the patterns. And I'm not sure if they're going to be separate PDFs where you can sort of choose what you want or just all in one PDF. And so I've been working on that pattern today and I'm pretty excited. And I've seen the ones that everyone's posting are really, really great. And they're all different styles. So, you know, I have, I mostly focus on historical stuff. Some of them do memes, some of them do pop culture, right? They do all sorts of different things. So there'll be a plethora of different things for every style, I think anyway, and it's going to be really cool. We're also planning on doing a zine, a regular zine, and this will probably be a digital zine that you can download. And so we're currently figuring out what we want that to look like. And um, I think we're going to do a few, we're going to try and do a few a year and we'll see how that goes. Anyway, that's really exciting. I'm really excited. And I, it's, it's really nice to kind of chat with other small designers who maybe aren't as well known and talk about how to market yourself and stuff like that. Because, you know, I'm an accidental designer, um, that who happened to go viral for one kind of pattern. And so I don't really know how to market myself. I don't really know how to market my other stuff. And I don't want this channel to be like me schlocking my stuff to you. You know what I mean? I want this channel to be talking about stitching where I kind of show if I'm working on something that I'm working on, I'll show you, but I don't want this to be 
like an infomercial. You know, I don't, I don't want that. That's not why I'm here. It's, it's nice to talk to other people who are in a similar boat to me who can sort of share tips and tricks. Like for example, how to get your patterns into magazines. I now know how to do that. And so I can work on doing that if I want to get into magazines how to get into various stitching boxes. Now I know how to do that. It's just good to have those resources because you don't know what you don't know. And people are talking about things in there and I'm just like, yeah, that's, that's really smart. And that's really useful information. I'm excited. It, I think it'll be really good for me and maybe for my business. And we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So, so on that same note, I kind of want to talk about my stitching journey because um, many of you may not know, um, much about my stitching journey and what you're seeing behind me is actually none of it is cross stitched. I'm just realizing as I'm looking at it. So I kind of want to talk about how I got to where I am, how I got to designing things, how I got to stitching things. And I know I've talked about this before, but it's been a while and I thought maybe you'd like to hear. And if you don't want to hear, then you can fast forward or, um, you know, I'll catch you later. Cause after this is just life update. So it's just me talking for the rest of the time. In the summer of 2019, after the semester ended, because I'm a college professor, after the semester ended in May of 2019, I kind of got this video game, this world building video game, city building video game, cityscapes, cityscapes, I think it's called cityscapes, where you build these like cities and you have all these issues, you know, it's like, a, it's a building simulator and a city simulator, whatever. So I'd sit down to play this game and say to myself, you can play for an hour and then you have to other things you have to do. Well, then I'd look up and it'd be eight hours later. I would just lose time. I would just get sucked into this game and lose time. And it wasn't feeling productive and it was fun. I enjoyed it, but I wasn't feeling like I was accomplishing anything. It didn't feel, I, I felt like I wasted my time. And now people can play video games and not feel like they waste time. I don't think video games are inherently a waste of time. You need to have downtime. You need to have joy time. You need to have things that you enjoy doing. And this wasn't really that for me. It was more, it was feeling more addictive than relaxing and fun, if that makes sense. So I was kind of in the market for a new hobby, right? Something to take my time that would help me feel like I'd accomplished something. And so I went to visit my, my family as I do in the summer. And my mom was, my mom's a knitter, uh, her main craft is knitting, but she's gone through multiple crafts in my lifetime. About every five years, she kind of switches crafts. So she had picked up cross stitching and she was just cross, cross stitching a couple things. And I was not interested in cross stitch because I struggle with counting and I still struggle with counting, but I found ways to deal with it. And I, I've talked about this before, but I really struggle with counting. I have, I struggle with uh, math. I struggle with switching numbers around. I probably have a mild form of dyscalculia, which is like dyslexia, but for numbers. And I have trouble remembering numbers. I have trouble reading numbers and not switching them around. I have trouble counting, you know, all these different things that are symptoms of this. I have mildly. So I wasn't interested in cross stitch at that point. This was summer of 2019, like I said, and I, but I, I had in the past been interested in embroidery. So I thought, okay, I'm going to try embroidery. I didn't actually think that I thought I'll buy an embroidery, an embroidery kit and see how it looks. So I bought a sampler. I don't know where it is now. It might be in my finished box, but I'm not going to worry about it, but I bought a sampler online. And I got it and it had no instructions. And I bought it at like two o'clock. I remember I was like, I was in bed at my grandparents' house at two o'clock in the morning buying this sampler. So I bought this sampler and it got to me and it had no instructions. And I was looking at it, just, I just don't know if I want to do this. So then I went to my local craft store to buy floss. We have a Michaels in my town. I went and bought some embroidery floss to see if that's something I wanted to do. And they also had, they had stacks of origami paper on clearance. I said, Oh, well, I've always wanted to do origami. So let me grab this. And this way I'll have several options of crafts. I want to try if one of them doesn't work out and I don't like it, I'll do another one. So I 
got home and I did some YouTubing and I looked at how to do stitches and I started following embroiderers on Instagram and on YouTube and I started watching all these embroiderers and tutorials and stuff like that. And I did this embroidery sampler and I was obsessed. So this is July of 2020, 2019. I became obsessed with embroidery and I was doing embroidery eight to 10 hours a day and working my normal hours. So I was not getting any sleep. And I ended up being the artist in residence in September at my friend's pie shop for a art walk that we do in town. So I had a bunch of, you know, embroideries that I was selling there. And then eventually after that happened, I was selling them in the pie shop and I didn't sell very many, but I sold some and it was, it was pretty good. It was nice. So then I'm, you know, I'm going through and then spring of 2020 hits and lockdown hits. And this was obviously this moment changed a lot of people's lives. It really changed my life. So I locked down with everyone else and we were very careful. And then I started watching floss tube in that time period, in that first sort of four, two or two to four months of, of lockdown. So, was, so I'm watching floss tube and I'm not a cross stitcher, but they have cool floss. They have interesting patterns. They have fun fabric, right? So all these things I didn't know existed are on floss tube because I only really knew DMC and Ada. I knew some fancy flosses because of another embroiderer that I, that I found who, yeah. So I knew some fancy flosses, but for the most part, I didn't know about hand dyed flosses. I only knew about DMC. And then later I found out about Devere Yarns, which is in the UK, but that's a, another story. So by mid July, I was doing a lot of stitching. I was doing a lot of crafting. I was watching a lot of YouTube and I was really anxious to see people because I'm an extrovert and we were very careful. We were very careful about not going out. And I was essentially extroverting all over my husband and I felt bad. So I decided to start a YouTube channel. My mom has a YouTube channel. She's had a YouTube channel. Well, at that point she'd had a YouTube channel for like five years. And so I decided to start a stitching and history YouTube, YouTube channel that was also baking. I did some baking in there. That was when I was sort of, when I was baking as well. And I started my YouTube journey and I made some stitchy friends and my first videos were terrible as I think they always are. Like I was literally reading a script and now I don't even have notes. I just babble now. But at, the, at that time I was reading a script, you know, you don't quite know what to do. And I think the first, my first video, I was the camera, like I was using the actual camera as opposed to the front facing camera. So I didn't even know where I was showing things. I mean, it was a, it's a mess, that first video. I got better. And then I started seeing everyone stitch temperature patterns. And at this point I was not a cross stitcher. And so I was looking for an embroidery temperature pattern and it didn't exist. I couldn't find one that was freehand embroidery. So I decided that I had to make one myself. And what I decided, to, well, and, and so I'm trying to sort of think about what objects could you have 365 of in a rainbow of colors and not have it look terrible and not copy from someone else because I certainly didn't want to take someone else's idea and just translate it into embroidery. That wasn't my goal. My goal was to come up with a pattern that, you know, was, was individual to me that I had designed. And as I was walking my dog, I do my best thinking when I'm walking my dog, um, I came up with the books. So that's how the temperature bookshelf came to be is walking my dog and seeing there was no, no embroidery patterns for temperature patterns that I could find. And as I was talking about this idea on my floss tube, one of my subscribers said, you know, if you turn that into a cross stitch pattern, I would buy it. I would stitch it. And so I did a little informal poll and I said, okay, if, if I turn this into a cross stitch pattern, how many of you do you think would, would buy it from me? Because I'd have to buy the program and, you know, do the work and stuff like that. And so I got a few, 
I got a handful of people who said, oh yeah, I'd buy it. I bought the software. If I had, if I sold five patterns, it would pay off the software and that would be great. And the rest is kind of history. And so that's how I became a cross stitch designer. So I became a cross stitch designer before I had ever cross stitched anything because I'm kind of the accidental cross stitch designer. I did not intend to design cross stitch. I didn't intend to sell cross stitch. In fact, I was collecting fabric and stuff to make project bags and like scissors fobs and needle minders to sell. That was gonna be, that was my plan. My plan was to, to sort of support the work that I'm doing and support my hobby. I was gonna sell project bags, needle minders, and scissors swabs. And I still have all the stuff for that, so that may happen in the future, but for now, cross stitch patterns are, <laughs> are definitely enough for me. Well, then I found these 15th, 16th, 17th century lace books, lace pattern books, and textile pattern books. And the motifs in them were just so wonderful and could easily be, could easily be translated into cross stitch patterns. And so I did my first cross stitch pattern, which was a dragon and harpy, which looked like this. And you can find it on my Etsy shop. And I realized that if I wanted to do this for real, I needed to stitch them. I needed to know, I needed to understand cross stitch and by doing cross stitch, I couldn't just design cross stitch patterns for cross stitchers without having stitched them. That just, rubbed me the wrong way. So this was the first cross stitch pattern that I ever did. This is the first um, cross stitch pattern that I ever finished. And it's funny because I finished it on a live stream by Stitch and Jewels. I was watching a Stitch and Jewels live stream and she was just about to end. I'm like, if you give me like five minutes, I will finish this. And so she just kept on talking about her stuff and I finished my first cross stitch pattern ever and it was my pattern and then I released it. And so I know some of you have stitched it already and I appreciate that. So that is my accidental cross stitch journey. And now I'm just a little bit obsessed with cross stitch to be perfectly honest with you. I'm going through a cross stitch phase and I still do embroidery sometimes. Every once in a while I'll have sort of a, a theme or, or a series or something. I did my sleuth series. I have my cosmic egg that I have to keep working on. I haven't worked on that in a while. And I have other uh, embroidery things that I've done along the way, but at the moment I'm definitely going through a cross stitch phase and that's fine with me. It, it, you know, I have all the materials. I don't have to buy extra stuff for it. I can just kind of do it and I, and it lets me design my own pattern. So I get to be creative in that way. Anyway, so that's how I became a cross stitch designer. That's how I, that's how I started a YouTube channel. That's how I started stitching. So I've only been stitching since 2019, which I guess at this point almost four years. And I've only been doing cross stitch since 2020, which is about three years. No, I'm sorry. I started cross stitching in 2021. So I've only been cross stitching for two years now, which is really interesting to me. So I would like to get back to embroidery. I see things I want to embroider all the time. I follow some really inspiring embroidery and textile artists. I have some classes that I want to take on embroidery from the Embroiderers Guild of America and also from the... Royal School of Needlework. And I just want to try all the textile. Like I want to do all the fiber arts. Sometimes I get into weaving. Sometimes I get into other things like vintage spools. But I think in the end, I'm always going to fall back to embroidery because I think that's really where my, my main passion is. So we'll see. We'll see when I get back there. I think I will. I think I will fairly soon, especially when I have more time so I can do cross stitch and embroidery. And I think that will, will make it better. And, and I, I maybe want to, I might want to have my cosmic egg be my focus for May or for spring break. No, I don't want to put too much in spring break. I think I might do a monogamy and do my, um, cosmic egg. That would be, that would feel really good to get that kind of moved along because I really love that piece so much. I really do. Anyway, that's my, that's my story. Now you know a little bit more about my story. And just to give you a life update, if you're interested, this past month was busy. Yesterday was my first day off in about three weeks. Last Saturday was the National History Day 
North Regional Competition, which is basically a science fair for history. And it, it was so much. It was a lot. I, I ran it myself. I had help from my student worker, but she can only do so much. I had judges who helped a ton, but they can only do so much. And so I really overextended myself and I made some mistakes at the end. I switched some winners around, which was a, was a mess up. I forgot a little kids, like a middle school, like little kids, uh, certificate. Cause he won. I forgot to do his certificate. I felt really bad. So it was very stressful, but it's done and the kids were great. And I may have recruited a student from it, which is amazing. I did not expect to do that, but I mean, it's always a hope, right? You always hope that you'll be able to recruit a student, but you never know. So, but I have a, there's a student from one of the high schools that came who is interested in studying history and might want to study it, study it with us because she really loved hanging out with us. So that's awesome. Anyway, it's just, it was just, the whole thing felt like a triumph, even though I was exhausted and didn't have any time off and was working like 10 hour, 10, 15, 10, 11 hour days. I think in the end it's worth it. And we don't have to rebuild these processes for next year. We just have to have a checklist that, that we've already come up with and make it even better. And I'll have more support next year because my main, my other main person who is my support was on sabbatical this semester. And I, you know, I can't, and I wouldn't want to interrupt that. She did judge for me, but I didn't want to ask for her help with the um, with the setup and the organization because she's doing other things, right? That's that's part of what sabbatical is, is she's doing her research and um, really doing really good work over there. That's really the majority of my, <laughs> my month was working on that. We had a lot of sort of assessments and work things due on the 1st of March, which I had never done before because I'm new to my position. So everything I'm doing is new. And because it's new, it just takes longer and longer and longer. And there's no training. There's no handbook for department chairs. There's no like information. There are very kind colleagues who say, if you need help or don't understand something, let me know and I will help you. But of course, they're also ridiculously busy, right? Like we're all so busy that it's just hard. And what I'm finding is that our university in general punches above its weight class. So we're a very small university at the moment. We have fewer than 2000 students. We sh we've shrunk since I've been here, but at the moment we're at about 2000, a little less than 2000 students. And we host this national history day competition. We host a science bowl. We host the spelling bee. We have a, a big music conference. We, you know, it's like we do all these things, all these amazing things with not a lot of people. And I think just in general, we definitely punch above our weight, which is good and also really tiring. So that's kind of where I am. I, I, I think the really hectic part of my, of my semester is over it's still going to be a lot of work. Like I'm not going to be able to take spring break off, but I can breathe a little bit, catch up. I'm behind in my grading. Anyway, I just have a lot of things happening in my life. And one of the things I really want to try is I want to look into a, a project management software. So I don't know if I'm going to use like Microsoft planner because I have that but I definitely need a project management software because I feel like I have, there's too much happening that I need to take care of, or at least watch for me to remember it all on my own. I just can't, it's just too much. I, it's too much disparate things, right? It's not like I can just focus on one thing. I have tons of things happening all the time that I have to keep up with. And I really think having a project management software to at least remind me when things are happening will help, will help me a lot. Although I did realize that that Sunday, even though Sunday the 26th, because the competition was the 25th. So Sunday the 26th, I did notice that my brain felt less heavy, less foggy. I don't know how to explain it. It was just, it felt lighter in my brain. So I guess getting that National History Day competition out of my brain was really helpful. Anyway, 
that's it for me, I think. That's all I have to say. My plans are to work on my whips. Um, I have uh, a couple of new releases that I'm working on. I have my Patreon, my March Patreon exclusive. I have my next Medieval Marginalia pattern, and then I have my Earth Day pattern. So I have three patterns on the go at the moment, which is interesting. It feels kind of good, actually. It feels kind of good. I've been working on them this morning, and I feel very good about how they're looking. Yeah, I, I'm feeling really positive. I'm tired. I had an, we had an emergency friend, grad school friend group Zoom last night that turned into, turned into heavy stuff. And so I was up until about 2 o'clock. Um, in the morning, which is not usual for me, but sometimes you just have to stay up late to help your friends. You know what I mean? So I'm a little bit tired, but I'm not feeling drained and exhausted and like weary, like I had been feeling before. And then next week being spring break is, is just really fantastic. <laughs> really fantastic. Cause I give my students the week off too, which means I don't have to lesson plan for that week. And that makes a huge difference because I'm less than planning as I go because I, because I stupidly change my class every semester. Like I, I teach this, I teach, I'm on kind of a two to three year rotation with my classes. So I teach them like every, so I don't teach them every year, but I have, you know, I've taught this class like three or four times since I've been here. I change it every time. I don't just like rely on my old stuff. I change the books. I change the focus. I change the discussion questions. I change the modality, all sorts of things. <laughs> that takes time. Shoot. That takes time. That's it from me. I want to thank you all so much for joining me today. It was good to hang out with you and, you know, get all this out. And this actually isn't nearly as long as I was afraid it was going to be. So I, I don't think I forgot anything. I don't think I have anything else to share. I will almost definitely see you next week. And I will hopefully in the next two weeks have a video of this space all organized for you to, to give you a little tour of the new space, which will be really fun. So... I'm, I'm rambling now. So I will see you later. Thank you so much for joining me. Please take good care of yourselves and have a good one. Bye.